Hey there, busy professional. Welcome back to another episode of Deep Diving into the World of Note Taking Tools. Today we are tackling the burning question Is Heptabase really better than Obsidian? Nah, the eternal debate of tool comparison. But you know us at the Payless Movement. We are not about championing one tool over the other. Oh no, we are here to explore what works best for your specific needs, guided by our trusty ICO methodology. This video isn't sponsored by Heptabase, no. It's brought to you by our fantastic Paperless Movement membership members. Thanks to you, we can give an honest and unbiased comparison. And guess what? You might discover that Obsidian does some things better. Shocking, I know. But hold on, don't jump to the conclusions just yet. Heptabase isn't the only note-taking app we use, but it's our go-to for the deep thinking process. Curious what all this means? You'll find all the answers inside our digital note-taking like a pro course. We take a tool agnostic approach, guiding you through the note-taking jungle, and we promise that after taking the course, you'll have a crystal clear understanding of how to capture and retrieve information like a pro you are, no matter the tool you use. You'll know what tools will work best for you to unleash the full potential of your very own note-taking system. But for this video, we focus on Heptabase's map feature for deep thinking versus Obsidian's canvases, used for the same purpose. And we will keep it purely native inside Obsidian, no third-party plugins, why you ask? because we are all about pragmatic solutions for busy folks like you who may not have time to fiddle with plugins and themes. But hey, Obsidian Power users, you are not forgotten. Many of you are also part of our membership, so share your suggested plugin setup in the comments and let's spark a lively conversation about how you tackle the deep thinking process. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the comparison. Sit tight and hold on to your digital pens. This is going to be a fun ride. Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. All right then, let's start with the basics. Here we are inside Heptabase and we are here with my life system set up. So that's something in the end of the video. However, I want to start with the very basics. So inside Heptabase, we have different categories like maps and card library and tags and things like that. We are not diving into this in much detail in this video, but if you're interested to learn more, make sure to subscribe to the channel because there are a lot more videos coming out about this. This being said, today we will focus on the map feature and how it integrates with the different nodes and everything like that. So therefore, we go to the maps and we will create a new whiteboard. Okay, that's what they call it. So right click and say whiteboard. Now we get a whiteboard. We click into the whiteboard. We give it a name, comparison video. And there we have our whiteboard. It opens up on the side. I could close this now, but now I have easy access to the whiteboard. So what can we do in this whiteboard? We can right click and say text and give it a, some text, sample text. Okay, and then I could right click and I can turn this into a card and a card inside Heptabase are essentially the nodes that you are used inside Obsidian, okay? So here we have the sample text. I could select this. We can go to text and make it a heading. And here we have slash and then we have the different things. And this is very notion-like, okay? Also the whole UI UX feels really notion-like. I really love this because everything feels very polished and at the right place. And down below, when we go to more infos, we see the properties like the tags, and then we see the linked cards, which is are the backlinks. And then we also see the linked journal and the linked map. And this is something that I really like. I see on what map I mentioned this node. So let's switch to Obsidian and try to build what we have here. So here on the side, we have something called canvas. So we can create a new canvas. And now we are here, untitled canvas. I can double click here and say comparison video. So far, it's the same. Now, the text that I created inside Heptabase, we can do here easily as well by just double tapping and it creates the text. So sample text, boom. But this is now a card and in Heptabase, it was just simply text. And you can also drag this in order to create this. But now let's convert this into a node. So in this case, it converts it into a file, which is essentially the same. Now we have to give it a new name. So again, I name it simple text. And now it used this and added the text. Okay, so more or less the same. And now I have a node. Now you see when I click here, this is our sample text. We see the linked mentions, the unlinked mentions. But what we don't see is the connection to the canvas. Again. If you know that there is a plugin that allows me to see this, 
Let us know in the comments below, but that's not something I'm covering in this video. This is the plain installation of Obsidian. Okay, but now let's go back to the canvas that we just created. And I made this folder, which moves the canvases automatically into this. And I called it maps to make it similar to what we have inside Aptabase. Okay, now we have the sample text and let's make another one. Very original, I know. But what I really like about Obsidian is how it snaps into place, how easy it is to really place the things here. And now I see the dot here and I can connect this very easily. And I have the first map. And this is something really nice. I can click here. I can change the color of this. And then in Obsidian, we just select this and we have the option to group this together. So we have a group and this is a group level one. And what I really like is now I can open this up. I can add a new group and I call this group level two. And if I zoom out, I make this small, bring it in. So the nice thing here is I can now move this around and the group will stay in here. Why do I test this? Using Miro, you have something called frames and there it doesn't work. Okay. You cannot overlap frames and then move it around. Here you can do, let's go to Heptabase and catch up what we just built inside Obsidian. So in Heptabase, it works like this. So I can also double click and it will directly create a card or a node. And let's say sample text two. So now in order to connect these two, you see there are no dots around. I can hit command two on a Mac and now I can drag this out and I have it connected. So now you see there is no grid in the background and it's pretty hard to position this perfectly. Okay, so it's snapping into place, but I don't know why. And then here there are no guides showing me the alignment. However, what I think is easy if you hold down shift and then you drag it, now it's really perfectly snapping into the middle and no issue at all to place this. Now, again, we can select everything. We have the three dots. We can go here or we just simply right click onto this. And now we have a lot of options here. What we can do is create a section, which is essentially the grouping we saw in a canvas in Obsidian. Now let's call it section one. And again, we can have another section that's created this way section two. And now let's consume this section. And here you go. It's the same way. We move the things around. And I think this is really great. That's something I really need that this works. Now I want to search for my sections. Imagine we are somewhere inside Heptabase and we want to find a section. So obviously I can now go to command O and start searching and I can search for sample text. And there you go. You see this and I really like how it previews the notes. But do we also find sections? Section one, there we go. There's the section. It shows me even that's the category section. It also shows me the block level findings. And now you see two different sections. And now I could be confused, but it shows me also the whiteboard it is on. Okay, so this is actually in the use Hepta for learning, explaining what section one means. And here's the comparison video. When I click there, it selects it and zooms in. That's something we unfortunately are not able to find here. So when I start searching for group, it's not appearing at all. If I search for sample text, obviously it is appearing. But there is no preview while I'm searching. So something I really appreciate inside Heptabase. Let's go back to Heptabase and let's see what else we can do on our whiteboard. So I can right click and I can now convert this card into a mind map. Boom, now I have a mind map and you see here already I can make plus and say branch one, branch two. And I can also mention other cards. I can uh, bring in a whole cards like the sample text two here and so on. I can actually hold down option and I can open up the card, which is now this. And it again shows me it is on the white comparison video whiteboard. If I click there, it zooms to the card where I moved it in. So I can also go to the three dots and say add to whiteboard or command M. Boom, and I said a comparison, comparison video. And here it edited, it. I can click view and it moves over here, okay? But what we have here is a mind map, okay? I can have the mind map as you know it in both directions. And I have the normal branching things that the keyboard shortcuts and so on. So let's go back to Obsidian. And unfortunately there, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to add mind maps to a canvas. Again, not sure if there is a plugin, but on the native one, this option is not available. Now also bringing in content, that's very crucial now where I think Obsidian still 
works better than Heptabase. And I really hope Heptabase development team, if you are watching this, this is for you. I really hope I can make clear the point where the friction lies in the deep thinking process using Heptabase versus Obsidian. The problem we are facing using Heptabase is adding any type of content to our whiteboard. We are used to using Miro as our whiteboarding tool. We developed all the courses on Miro and we're still using Miro for our collaboration work. And we are used that we are able to throw anything we like onto the whiteboard. And if we go to Obsidian and I just start throwing in, for example, an image, boom, image is there. Or I can even throw in a video. It uploads the video, it places it because it's the file locally stored. And I really like this, that now the file is in a folder in my vault and I have it accessible here. So there's the video, it's playing the video, okay? I can increase the size of the video. If I copy a link from YouTube and I'm on the whiteboard, I can just copy paste the link in here and it will automatically embed the video in here. And boom, there we are. So now I can play around, I can connect these things and I can start writing about this, add a card, boom, and now I can make comments there. So that's, this is working really nicely. Again, if I have just a file like the Excel sheet here, boom, I have the file in here and just, it's not looking nice, but it is at least a reference to the file. Okay, now I could go here to the file, but it opens up the file. So this is what I consider a frictionless way to add new information to the place. Another thing is if I use one of our magic slides that we have in our digital note-taking course and I drag and drop it over here, you have the PDF here. Okay, so now I can increase it size and it's a bit clunky to show the PDF. Now let's go to Heptabase on the other hand and drag and drop the PDF in here. Boom, I have a nice view of the PDF. I can open this up on the side and now we have the thing here. So I could now select this text, for example. I can highlight this text and now I can drag it into the field here. And now we have the highlight in here. Okay, so whenever I go here, I have here the locate highlight. So when I close this, I can now click here and it opens up the highlight. It jumps to the place where this highlight was mentioned. So imagine you have a long document. This is very useful because it jumps to the document and you have now all the related content. And again, I can now start connecting the things. So here we have now the PDF card, which is a specific type of card. I can remove this. Doesn't mean that the card disappeared now, but now it's in my card library. So when I click here, see there is still the PDF coming up. So I think this is very nicely done inside Heptabase compared to Obsidian. But now when I try to move in things like an image, boom, it says fail to import PDF. But I can have a text field. And now I go here, I use the image, I bring it into this text field, and there we go. So it's possible to bring in images the same way as we saw it in Obsidian. Also for the link, for the YouTube link, let's make a text, paste the link, and now it asks me embed video. Boom, now I have the video in Heptabase as well. So that's not an issue, but I think it creates friction that I need to right click and make a text because double clicking will create a card. Maybe I don't want to have a card. And then again, if I use a file, same thing, I just make a text. I bring in this file and there we go. Now I have the file here. That's fine. But again, this is something I think that could be easily resolved. Telling the system the moment somebody drags in an image, create a text field and add the image and then boom, you have it. Or for the videos and so on. I don't know from a developer perspective how much is involved to add this functionality, but I think it's very crucial if I drag and drop things in here that I'm able to just have this on my whiteboard without additional ways to go for. Okay, so when I have the car text, I open up the video, I bring it in here, boom, see, it works, it works. I have the video now here. Another advantage inside Heptabase is when I open up a note and I write some text, I can anytime use now this block that I have there because like Notion, we have different blocks in here. All right, more text. Now we have two blocks, okay? I can use one block and drag it out. Boom, now it's a new card that I just created and it is linked back to where it was mentioned. So I can actually click here and go to the place. So here it's mentioned. So this means it's mentioned in here. See, write some text, boom. And when I click here, it's not opening the card. It's actually moving 
to the place where it is mentioned on the whiteboard. So these are the subtleties that allows me to stay on the whiteboard focus and then have just this side panel open to bring in additional information whenever I need it. So I really like this. I can bring this in here. So if this is a video, I could drag and drop this in here. See, now it creates a new card inside this node and this is now a separate card. So it looks a bit confusing now, but it makes total sense when you are in a deep thinking process. So you see, this is where it really starts that Heptabase has a complete different way to lay out information and bring information together. And by having the specific structure here on the side, so here, for example, I made some notes on Medium and here are the highlights from Medium. Now I can drag in this highlight from Medium if I need it for context. I also would be able to search for these highlights and so on. So there are many things that go now beyond when for the plain comparison. Here we are just comparing really the features between Obsidian and Heptabase. There are other things like you can change the colors of the card. That's again something you can do easily in Heptabase as well. So here I go to the card, right click and change the color. Boom, there we go. You can change the color of the section as well. And again, going back to Obsidian. Now I was really showing you a lot about the whiteboarding. But one thing that I want to scratch is the properties that was recently added to Obsidian. So now I'm inside the card. We have now the option in Obsidian to add properties. And what I really like in Obsidian is that I can add aliases. That was already possible before. Now it's even easier with the new properties. So let's say sample text would be also ST. Okay. So now whenever I reference in a different node, ST, I see now it's sample text that's really useful in my opinion. And if I use ST, it will use ST. So that's really useful. And then I can keep writing. That's one of the things. But then I have also the option to add tags here. And now I have a tag test. So when I click on this, it starts searching for the, all the nodes that have the tag test. Now let's look what Heptabase does. When you add Heptabase, we open the sample text. Now I have down here, the properties as well. Let's add a tag like test. And let's see what happens. Now it added a tag. When I click here, it opens up a database for this tag. So now I can give additional properties to this database. And this is something that we know from Tana. If you ever use Tana and super tags, that's something we know from there. So now I can add more properties like multi-select and so on. And what they are also adding, so I can have text, for example, and then here I can mention other nodes. So now I have really the context here and what they are uh, working on that there will be now also the backlinks showing because right now it's not mentioned that it is mentioned in this property, but that's something they will add anytime now. So I'm really looking forward to this, but this being said, this is next level when it comes to tags. So that's something I really appreciate. I know guys that there are plugins to give you the database view as well inside Obsidian. Maybe eventually they will also add this as a native feature. It would just make sense now that they add this as well, but we are comparing here now the native version uh, as it is right now to Heptabase. Okay. I won't dive deeper into this, but I cannot wait to show you what Paco has built inside Heptabase. And this will be also part of our new course about Heptabase if you're interested in. So we will show you exactly how you can build up your My Life system inside Heptabase. Curious about our upcoming course on Heptabase and the My Life system? Drop a comment below. Your input guides our content. If you like the video, don't forget to share it with your fellow professionals. Give it a like and if you haven't already, subscribe so we can catch you up next time. Happy note taking.